Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, module on a quick uh, demo of the OCI block volume service. In the previous module, we introduced the block volume service and we looked into some of these, uh, some of its details. Uh, in this uh, uh, module, let's uh, demo the service and look at some of those uh, things in action. So right here, I'm in the OCI console. We have been using uh, the OCI console for some of the other modules. And if I click on these uh, sandwich or the burger menu here, I can see uh, the various um, um, service links here, right? So there's compute, block storage, object storage, etc. So I'll click on block storage, and the first link here is block volumes. And right here, it gives me an option to create a new block volume. So let's create a new block volume. And I've been creating a bunch of these uh, block volumes in my account previously. I'll call it block volume one. Compartment training is fine. I'm in a multi AD region, so it gives me a choice of three different ADs. If I'm in a single AD region, um, I'll just see one AD here, and that's fine. It gives me a size. Uh, let me just pick 100 gig. Right below, you can see that the sizes can go from 50 gigs all the way to 32 terabyte. Right? We looked into this in uh, when we were discussing the service. Um, there are backup policies, etc. We'll look into the to, into those uh, in the subsequent module. And right here, there is the volume performance units. We talked about the the whole idea of elastic performance with the block volume service. So I can pick three different uh, performance uh, levels. There is a lower lowest cost, lower cost, which gives me two IOPS per gig. There is the balanced uh, level, which gives me 60 uh, IOPS per gig. And this is the default. If I hadn't picked anything, it would default to 60 IOPS per gig. Uh, this is the default both for new block volumes as well as boot volumes. And then right here, the third one is the higher performance. If I go into this, I get 75 IOPS per gig. The use cases, the first one uh, where you uh, is for uh, for applications like streaming, data warehouse, uh, log, log in, ingestion, where you need a lot of sequential uh, uh, throughput, uh, you would go with the lowest cost. Um, balanced is good for uh, any kind of random read or write. Um, so booting up your disks, uh, running your databases, SharePoint, VMware, etc. And then the highest performance is for really uh, the best performance workloads like your databases, etc. You would go with uh, the highest performance. So I'd pick balanced here. That's fine. Right below, I see an uh, option for encryption. So this is server side encryption. I could encrypt using Oracle managed keys. So we manage the keys uh, for server side uh, encryption. So this is uh, encryption at rest for data at rest. Or I could bring in my own keys. I could do that. Uh, I'm going to let Oracle manage the keys. That's fine. And right here, I could do tagging. So let me just click uh, block volume. And it's rather straightforward uh, process to, to create a block volume. And again, it's flexible. I can choose any size between 50 gig uh, all the way to 32 terabyte. Right? As it's getting created, you can see here that I have some uh, links for uh, attached instances, matrix, uh, backups, clones, uh, etc. Right. So if I click on attached instances, I can see that there is no instance which is which is attached right now. So I can click attach instance, right? And I can I can I can attach this block volume to an instance. If you recall from the uh, from the uh, slides, uh, block volume, the whole idea is to give you the durable and persistent storage. So you can attach it to an instance, then you can detach it. Even if the instance goes away, your data is still uh, persistent and durable. So I get two options here, iSCSI and para-virtualized. Uh, I'll choose iSCSI, then I get different access type options. So there's read-write, there's read-write shareable, and there is read-only. So read-write makes means you can read and write both. Read-write shareable means the same block volume can be shared across multiple compute instances, right? That's again, no, no other cloud vendor does this today. Uh, except uh, Oracle, and um, so I'll choose read write, and read only means you know you want to protect the data, you just want to read, don't not write to it, right? So I can select instance here, and I have these four five instances running. If you recall from the other module we had on compute, we were running auto scaling. So let me just pick this auto scaling uh, instance, uh, and then it's asking me to pick a consistent device path. And if you scroll here, you can see the device path, uh, uh, get more details. The whole idea is if you are rebooting your instance and you want your block volumes to uh, mount automatically, it's a good idea to use the consistent device path. Otherwise, when you do that, uh, you, you have entries in your etc uh, fstab uh, file. Uh, sometimes you would see um, inconsistent behavior. Your block volumes would not 
uh, be mounted etc so it's good to use the consistent device path and you can see the uh, device path here slash dev slash oracle oci slash oracle vdb it always starts with it always the ends with oracle v uh, uh, d and then there is a letter here whether it's vdb vdc vdd etc etc right and you can choose any of these values so i'll click attach here and what it's doing now is it's attaching the block volume to the compute instance and as it does that um, let me jump over to the to the compute instance as it's doing that it because i chose my uh, attachment type as iSCSI, uh, i'll have to run some commands to attach my volume because remember these volumes are running on network storage so they're running somewhere else uh, they're not directly attached to the instance they are storage servers running over the the network so i need to run those commands if i had chosen uh, para virtualized uh, the, it automatically takes care of attaching the the volumes as if you know it's running locally uh, but then the downside with para virtualization is you have a little bit of performance overhead with ice because you don't run into that so if i click on instance here i can see that my block volume is attached right so i if i see uh, on this ellipsis menu um, there is a list of all the ice because commands to attach or detach so let me just copy my ice uh, commands and right here let me ssh first thing let me ssh into this instance so if i scroll up i can see the public ip address and this uh, this is the instance we were using for auto scaling and uh, it is living in a in a public subnet uh, and we had done the the, the the we had created the vcn and the subnets etc in the previous uh, modules so i am able to log to ssh into the instance and let me now run these iSCSI commands to attach uh, the block volume to the instance so I run these and you see all of these uh, the acknowledgement is that it's successful so now if I do a list of block devices I can see that uh, uh, this 100 gig uh, uh, block volume we just attach appears here right so what happened to the consistent uh, device path we just talked about so to look at that we could uh, do a listing and find out where those volumes are the, the consistent device paths are right and if you see here i'm doing a, just a listing uh, of the my uh, of my disks uh, you can see that this one here is the one we just attached right uh, slash dev slash oracle oci slash oracle vdb and to confirm that if i go back to my my console you can see the consistent device path here right is the same as as uh, as what appears on my uh, screen here right let me just clear my screen and now what i need to do is uh, this is typical of you know any operation you want to do uh, with your block devices i need to uh, i need to create a partition first let me run it and then i need to create a file system here And as the file system is 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 uh, created, uh, I can I can create a mount point, and then then I mount this uh, drive this uh, this block volume to the mount point, and then I can start using it. Right. So let me just quickly create a mount point. Add it in. Let's say it's this one is fine, and then sudo mount. And if I run list block devices now, I can see my 100 gig file is here, right? Uh, and now I can go start running my application here. I can start storing my data here, right? It's as as this uh, as you would expect in a sort of a block volume service, right? A couple of other things I can do here is uh, my block volume. If I click here, I can change my performance tiers, and it's dynamic. So if I want to go to a 75 uh, IOPS per gig, I could just click here, higher performance and change my performance and you would see that even though the icon I say it's provisioning it's dynamically it's a dynamic provisioning right so I don't have to detach my my volume I don't have to uh, I don't have to um, you know uh, incur a downtime to do that right and you can see my performance is now changed uh, and now I am at the higher performance uh, here right so it's pretty straightforward uh, I can also do backups and clones so if we click a backup here uh, I could say this is my full backup or incremental backup 
and click create and now my black ops is getting created black ops and clones are mutually exclusive so i can run only one at a time so if i if i want to come here and run a clone uh, it would give me an error saying that i cannot do a clone because there's a backup which is going on right the one thing which uh, you uh, you should notice here is um, my original volume was 100 gig but i could go to um, i could go to a higher uh, uh, tier uh, or a higher size uh, volume here so i could go to 200 200 gig and nothing prevents me from doing that uh, i could do that and create a clone and it's still the backup is going on otherwise you know i could create a clone of 200 gig so remember we talked about uh, block volume resize the three ways you can resize one way is you create a clone a bigger clone uh, the other way is you create a backup and a bigger backup right you could always go from 100 gig uh, volume to a backup which is 200 gig and you create a volume from that backup and the third way to do resize is if i go back to my block volume here is you would see that the resize is sort of right now grayed out right and that the reason it's grayed out is that this in this volume is attached to an instance so in order for me to uh, in order for me to uh, resize this volume i have to today it's it's offline resize so i'll uh, click on detach here and it detaches the the volume from the instance and now if i go back to my block volume uh, i should be able to resize it right so if i come here um, it's just in the process of uh, getting detached. Let me just refresh my screen. Uh, I should be able to resize it, right? And of course, when you resize, you can attach it back to the to the instance. Uh, but in in uh, when you do that, you will have to um, you know operating system has to recognize the new volume, so you'll have to create partitions and all that stuff. You'll have to do uh, again depending on Windows or or Linux, the behavior will be slightly different. But right now, you can see I'm going from a hundred gig volume uh, to um, to uh, two hundred gig. So uh, that's pretty much a quick demo on block volumes, uh, some of the characteristics. Uh, in the next few modules, we will look into things like backups uh, and, and restoration, and also uh, a little bit more details uh, on cloning and volume groups. Uh, thank you for joining this uh, module on a quick uh, block volume demo.